There's a lot of lies and mistruths being spread around like wildfire about getting a government job. And it's time to start debunking some of these popular myths. First is that you have to know somebody to get into the government. This is absolutely false. So here's the deal. A lot of people, they try to get a government job on usajobs.gov and they apply two, three times, maybe a dozen times, and they don't get in. So then they see their friend or somebody they know, they get in because they know somebody and they throw their hands up and they're like, the whole system's rigged. How can I expect to get a fair shake? I can't even get in. Or they think, well, this is just for veterans, right? These same people are using an ineffective, outdated resume that doesn't have the necessary information. It doesn't have on there your supervisor's name. It doesn't have on there how many hours you actually worked for that position. So they're submitting this resume and they're not getting anything back. Listen, the federal hiring process, it's not the best system. We all know that. But there are thousands of people every day getting hired that do not know anybody. I've been on interview panels where we didn't know the person. We had no idea who that person was. They were selected. That's how I got my job. I got a job, I didn't know anybody. I came out of the military, had no clue about who was in that agency, who was in that office. I sat down, I practiced. Before I sat down there, I was telling my success stories, trying to articulate myself, trying to sell myself, and I was selected multiple times. In the government, there are a lot of different hiring paths. And that's another thing that could be really discouraging. When you're marking no on the questionnaire, on the self-assessment, you're marking no, I'm not a veteran, no, I'm not in the Peace Corps. That's extremely discouraging. But understand this, half of the jobs that are, that are on USA Jobs right now, half of them, we're talking about 15,000 jobs, the only requirement is to be a US citizen. So if you are a US citizen, you can compete for those 15,000 jobs, as long as you have the relevant experience. The real question is, how many of those jobs have you applied to? Have you applied to any of them? And if you did, what'd you do? Did you apply to three or four of them or a few dozen of them and then called it quits? If you are not eligible for one of those hiring paths, you can create your own hiring path. How do you do that? Enroll in a certification program at a university. Enroll today. And in 12 months, once you've completed that certification program, you will have a hiring path for you. It'll be the recent student graduate hiring path. That is one way where you can reduce the competition and get into the federal government. Next, we have this idea that all the federal government jobs are in Washington, DC. And if you do not live in DC, Virginia, or Maryland, then what's the point? This is completely false. Only 30% of federal government jobs are in DC, meaning that 70% are across the world, across the country. But if you want the best chance at becoming a GS-14, a GS-15, if you want to be a senior executive, those opportunities are largely in the DC area. But if you just want a GS-11 or a GS-12, you can go to Arkansas, you can be a GS-11, you go to Florida. I mean, you do not have to be in this area. Let's take a brief moment and look at some of the states where we have lots of government jobs. First is California that have over 4,500 federal jobs today. Texas has 4,000 federal jobs. Florida has 3,000 federal jobs, and that is open today. You can go on usajobs.gov, you can click apply, and you can start applying for those jobs right now. But what if you live in the middle of nowhere? What if you're in a rural area? Maybe you're sitting on 10, 20 acres and you're just enjoying life out there, but there's not many employers. The economy isn't really moving that much. What do you do in that situation? Well, obviously it's gonna be more difficult for you, but there's still an option. There's the 100% remote work option that's available. You can look on USA Jobs. You can find jobs that are 100% remote. If we take a look at the opportunities right now on USA Jobs, there are over 500 remote work jobs. You can apply to those right now. Of course, with remote work jobs, there's a lot more competition. What does that mean? That means you have to have an edge. You have to be more competitive when it comes to your resume. You have to be better when it comes to your interviewing if you want to land one of these positions. Do not be surprised when you apply to one of these positions and it says over a thousand applicants have applied right alongside with you. The next myth is that the salaries are too low for federal employees. Now, if you're watching me and you make over $200,000 a year, yeah, I can see why you think it's too low. You probably don't even need to watch the rest of this video. You can close it out, go to the next video. But if you make under 200,000 a year, if you're like most Americans and you're making between 55, 65,000 a year, then 
No, the government actually pays more. On average, the federal government pays around $90,000, $95,000 a year. This is because the average GS grade in the federal government is GS-12 and some years it's GS-13. And we're talking about six figures when we're looking at GS-12 and GS-13, depending on the step level. Now, people argue with me at times and say, well, you can't draw that comparison, Ramon. You can't say that the average federal government job pays more than the average U.S., even though it does. They say, well, you know, the federal government's a niche. It's, it's a niche and it's largely white collared. So it's dis disproportionate when you compare it to the rest of the country. And I understand that argument, but I tell you what, I can go to Walmart right now. I can go to Target right now. And I bet I can grab two or three employees that are making about 15 to $18 an hour and I could put them in a GS9 position, right? If I sat down with them and gave them some information and redid their resume, they could compete for a 0301. They could do an administrative type government job and it would pay them more and it would have better benefits and they would be working towards a pension. The reason why most people don't even consider trying to get a government job is because the federal hiring process. It's confusing. They don't know where to start. But for most people, it is accessible and it's not just for white collar. In the government, they say GS is white collar and then WG is blue collar. A lot of these type of jobs, as long as you're willing to sit behind a desk and, and work on a computer, these skills can be taught to the majority of the citizens of this country. I have helped people that were making 40, 45,000 a year get into a GS9 position where now they're making 70, $73,000 a year. And their life, their quality of life just dramatically improves. And when I'm talking to these individuals, they have no idea that this was even possible. They thought they just had to stay at their position. They were doing administrative work, right? Different organization. They move over to federal government, they experience a higher salary and higher job satisfaction. The next myth is that the federal government is shrinking. I don't know who told you this. I don't know if it was on the news or you read an online article. This is not true. It doesn't matter who the president is. You say there's a Democrat, there's a Republican. A Republican's coming in, they're going to cut government jobs. In the last 20 years, the level of the government has been the same. 2.1 million, that's how much it's been. It doesn't matter how much reshuffling they want to do, it stays about at that level. And if a federal agency is reduced, that's probably because there's an increase in another federal agency. There's, there's two federal agencies that generally seem safe when it comes to cuts and reshuffling. People don't wanna mess with the Department of Veteran Affairs because, because of veterans. It, it's not in your political best interest to attack veterans. That's one. The second one is Department of Defense because a lot of politicians wanna seem like they're strong on national defense. So they wanna bolster that agency. So if you go into those two, chances are you're not gonna experience a rift or a reduction in force or layoffs or anything like that. In fact, those two agencies, because they're so large, there's more promotional opportunities. There's more opportunities to advance to the higher levels of government. Next myth is you cannot fire a federal employee. Everyone is replaceable. Anyone can get terminated. It is based on the situation. So a federal employee lies on a report, lies on their time card, has integrity issues, they can be fired. Another thing, Federal employees, they do not meet the qualification section of their job any longer, meaning they lost a clearance. They were a special agent at the CIA. They lost their top secret clearance. Well, you cannot be a special agent anymore. You are convicted of a crime that causes you to lose your clearance. Well, that's the end of your job. But when it comes to performance issues, a lot of times that's a little bit more nuanced. It takes time to remove an employee based on performance. And that's because there's an opportunity that person can, can improve their performance. And what happens is a performance improvement plan is set into place by your supervisor in HR, and then you monitor your progress. Maybe in June, your progress improves. In July, it declines. And then in August, it improves. So it's, it takes a while. And then even after you have enough supporting documentations to fire that employee, they can appeal it. They can win the appeal. It can be drug out. So that's one of the reasons why people say that it's harder to fire a federal employee. All right, so if you're set on working for the federal government, but you wanna know what agency is the best, what agency should you be focused on? If you wanna know that, a list just came out recently talking about the best agencies and also the worst agencies. If you wanna find out that information, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.